Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Jane Bach, Technical Director at the Wheat Marketing Center and a baker and influencer here at Bakerpedia. And today I'm going to be talking to you about assessing end product quality. Now there are a number of ways to assess end product quality and there are several that can be used to objectively quantify um, the quality of that end product. Instrumental texture and instrumental volume are two prominent examples of objective quantification of end product quality. Now, end product scoring has typically been performed by trained personnel. But the challenge with this is that it allows for subjective bias to creep into the score. What do I mean by that? Well, the way each person sees and perceives an object is unique to that individual. And environmental factors like lighting and the way the products have been presented can also influence that perception. Additionally, let's be honest, our ability to detect and accurately evaluate small differences in product quality is quite limited actually. Yet we still tend to heavily rely on visual assessment of products for scoring, despite our inability to fully account for these subjective challenges. However, there are instruments that you can use to eliminate much of that subjective bias. And the instrument I'm going to talk about specifically today is the C-cell from Caliber Control. Now the C-cell is essentially an advanced digital imaging system. And it produces a high resolution color image of a product that's then digitally analyzed with objectively quantified results provided to the user in a detailed report. Now, examples of data from this report include parameters such as crumb and crust color, the dimensions of, for example, a bread slice that you're putting in there, or the dimensions of a cookie that you're assessing. Um, it will give you an assessment of the shape, um, especially things like symmetry, for example. You can also evaluate um, the processing that went into it, for example, um, molding performance via crumb elongation data. Um, and of course, you can look at things like cell size, for example, cell diameter. So with this kind of data, it's very easy to see how the C-cell fits into a quality control program for evaluating finished product quality and consistency. But there are other areas where it can be applied for better discernment and decision making. And the um, range of areas where you can use this instrument to make those decisions is quite broad. So let's take a look at an example like process control. How can you use the C cell to make decisions about process control? Well, process control can benefit from evaluating things like the work input that you're putting into a dough, the mixing conditions that you're applying, how long, what temperature, the proofing conditions, and you can take it all the way through baking. And by looking at these small differences um, that come out of the C cell data, you can start to pinpoint processing conditions that result in a more optimal end product. And let's be honest, a one to 2% improvement in process control can lead to big improvements in finished product quality and also cost control. You can also use the C-cell to aid in areas like R&D, obviously. You can evaluate ingredients from alternative um, suppliers. You can look at new formulations or clean label reformulations. Um, and the C-cell can also help um, with the optimization of usage levels of expensive ingredients, especially when you're kind of in that mid quality range. Other user groups that can benefit from use of the C-cell include, for example, plant breeders for early screening of quality performance. Millers can uh, use the C-cell, especially for test bakes uh, as proof of consistency. Bakers can use it as a control system, as we mentioned. Ingredient suppliers, when they are developing data that they can then use to support um, their customers, they can use it to optimize new ingredient performance levels. And bakery equipment manufacturers can refine new plant designs 
um, on the process control side. side. And of course, academic research is always interested um, in terms of evaluating that in product quality and trying to get an objective assessment of things like cell size um, and the different parameters that come from that report. So to accommodate uh, use across a wide range of user groups and environments, Caliber has designed the C-cell as a closed instrument that's easy and fast to use. So calibration is a simple 30 second procedure with a single color tile. You present first one side, then you flip it over. It's a very quick uh, calibration process. Sample presentation is very simple. The sample is simply placed in the observation drawer for digital imaging. While sample, sample preparation isn't overly involved, um, it is important to maintain consistent, for example, slice height and a clean cut surface to allow for even lighting. So even though you don't have to do a lot of prep work, it is really important to make sure that you're presenting a very nice, um, consistent height, even surface to the instrument for best results. There are several different reporting options um, that you can select from the software itself. And of course, um, processed images can be supplied as well. New developments that Caliber has been working on include software focused on industry four requirements regarding big data analysis. And let's be honest, the C-cell produces so much objective data that it can be difficult to figure out where to start with it. So it's important to remember that at the end of the day, the goal is really to fingerprint your product to set the baseline against which comparisons can be made. So a good starting point is to select maybe six to eight parameters from that report that you get from the instrument and begin to build your baseline. A good example for white pan bread might be selecting parameters such as the number of cells, the cell wall thickness, and the cell diameter, looking at cell elongation, concavity, and sidewall collapse. Those might be the parameters that you start with, and then you can add and subtract as needed um, as you start to figure out which parameters are most important for your product. And it's important to remember that the priority list for parameters change based on company philosophy. You'll need to determine the parameters that are most critical for your product and process. And as you become more familiar with your product, you can add parameters to aid in that fingerprinting process. So as you can see, there are a lot of things that you can do with the C-cell that's not just related to quality control. And there's a lot of data that you can pull from the instrument that you can use to make decisions about various aspects of your operation. So if you have questions, of course, feel free to go to the Bakerpedia page and join in on the Baker Professional Forums. And of course, reach out to Caliber Control with questions about the instrument itself. Thanks everyone, we'll talk again soon.